Welcome, today we will be disassembling a MacBook Pro 15 inch, uh, A1286, and the model number is MD318LL-A, late 2011. All right, so first we're gonna to wanna to remove that bottom cover, and it is just a small Phillips bit um, using a two millimeter. So remove the 10 screws holding on the bottom cover. And then you can flip the cover up and remove it. All right, next we will remove the battery. Um, the connector will just pop straight up, so get your fingernails under there. And pop it out. Now there's usually three screws holding the battery in. This one apparently only has one left, and it is a tri-lobe small tri-lobe bit, so I want you to remove the three tri-lobe screws. You can lift the battery out of the case. All right, this one has also had the hard drive removed, um, otherwise it would be sitting right here, so we're gonna go ahead and remove that hard drive caddy set. So we'll go ahead and disconnect it and free the connector from the tape and we can remove the screws. Pretty small bit holding on the um, SATA cable. I believe it's a one millimeter Phillips. So we'll go ahead and remove those. We can remove the ribbon. So just gently pull up on the ribbon. is held in by some adhesive. There is the hard drive caddy. And now we can remove the memory. So just spread the little bars. Pull out the memory stick. And now we'll go ahead and disconnect the antenna cables and ribbons to the air card. and then remove the screw. Now we can pull the disk drive. 
just pull up on the little ribbon and that is going to be a Torx bit. T7. drive. Right next we are going to remove the cooling fans so the connector can just lift up and out from the wire side. And we'll use a T6 bit to remove the screws. And now you can lift the fan from the logic board, or fans I should say. All right, now we are going to remove the screws that are retaining the ribbon connectors over here. That is gonna be a larger size Phillips bit. And then just flick up with your fingernail to pull the first one. And then this one has a little tiny lever that you pop up. And then you can pull that ribbon out of there. You got one more here. One more for the speakers. Just pull straight up from the cable side. And our display cable. I'm going to flip up that little bar, make sure the adhesive or anything is not sticking it on there, and then use that to pull backwards, and it'll slide out laterally. All right, now we are going to use our T6 bit to remove the uh, MagSafe because this is going to come out with the logic board. And then we can finish removing the screws from the logic board. So once you have all the screws out, you can gently wiggle the logic board. Just make double sure you've disconnected all the ribbons. Oops, looks like there's one more right here. Tiny one. Just 
want to give it a little gentle wiggle and then slowly flip it over and make sure you've removed all of the ribbons and there's nothing on the bottom side and there is the logic board and the MagSafe jack can just pull straight out. All right, next we are gonna separate the display assembly from the palm rest assembly. So we'll go ahead and remove these small retainer screws. And this way we can free the cables and uncover the hinges. So it looks like we'll have three screws on each side for the hinges and those are T6. Alright, now we are going to remove two of the three screws on each side of the hinges leaving one in place on each side so we can still open up the display and then once we have it open we can remove those last two screws The reason you want the display open when you remove the last screws is so that the hinges will clear the palm rest. If the display is closed when you remove the screws, then you're not gonna be able to clear the hinges around the palm rest and you'll be struggling with it. So there we go, we've separated the two halves. And there's our very dirty, complete display assembly. All right, so now we can um, disassemble the palm rest assembly. So first we're gonna go ahead and remove the touch pad. So the way, the best way to do it is to just remove the two silver screws. On each side. And then that will allow you to remove the touch pad. Okay, so we'll just push it toward the front to release the back part and then and unstick the ribbon and feed it through the little hole. All right, now we can start removing the stuff that's in the way of the keyboard. So these are just small Phillips size bits. So we can move the crossbar. And then the power button. Now we can carefully unstick the keyboard backlight. So just work your way around the perimeter.
So you'll be grabbing these three thin layers here. There's the backing and then the uh, transparent layer and then the white layer for diffusing. So just peel the whole thing back in one shot. Now for the keyboard, there are a lot of screws. So, I mean, you have rows and rows of tiny little screws. Once you remove all of these and you have the power button free, then the keyboard will just come straight out. All right, so once you have all the screws out and you've double checked you got them all out, make sure that the power button is still free and then you can just lift the keyboard straight out. So all we have left is a small LED board and speaker and a little antenna. So that is how you disassemble a 1286 MacBook Pro 2011. Thank you, and if this helped you, like and subscribe. Thank you very much.